Hi guys, Panther Gaming right here right now, bringing you a coaching session with Shadow Girl, who is plat three, I believe, right now. Oh. Plat four. All right, all right. You'll be plat three soon enough. So you said, Where? you said uh, that it's tough for you. Like the late game is probably tough, right? Uh, yeah, it's uh, where I struggle the most, um, especially on transitions is where I really, really have a big problem. Okay, so we will definitely work on that. I will just lower the volume of the music if I can a little bit, because I still think it's too loud. There we go. So, what are you going for and why? So, in this one, I go for a sword. Uh, okay. I go for an army. Um, because I know I will most likely be playing a sword top. Okay. I think sword is probably the strongest item right now, so I completely agree. Oh, I'm gonna mute this, yeah. Okay. So, potential gunblade. Yep. You pick up the Wukong? Yep. It's good enough? Yeah. It's good enough. No hesitation. <laughs> no, but I mean, Wukong is good enough. But you just need to know that this is a chosen you should probably consider selling on, on level 6. This I, is not... <laughs> I think I kept him a little bit too long on both this game and on our game, actually. Okay, you're buying everything? Good. Mm -hmm. Keeping your options open. Okay, what, what should you... Okay. What should you always buy and play here? Nidalee, Maokai. Nid like, Nidalee, you always buy Nidalee, you always put her in, because she gets Warlord stacks. If you wait a little bit, uh, I think I actually end up buying her. But you, you're not playing her. Uh, no, not uh, at this point, at least. But she can get a Warlord stack if you play her. Wait, she still gets stacks even though you don't have the... Uh... Of course! Oh, I didn't actually know that. <laughs> I thought you actually needed to have the walls. No, every every time she wins, she gets a stack. And if warlords are in, then it ma like then she actually shows the stacks. Oh, I didn't actually know that. Yeah. And this works for every single unit in the game. So every unit that you have in the fight, if you put a warlord banner on them, it like retroactively says, Okay, they won four fights, for example. So it's actually, like, everything is tracked. So that that's why you should always put in, like, if it doesn't cost you Econ, you should always put in, put in your Warlords. And you don't buy her. Oh, what a shame. Oh. Yeah, Diana's fine. And Thresh. Okay. Why not? Okay. Yeah, I was just thinking what is the strongest board I can play right now. As I didn't really see any divines, I uh, went for, well, that. Um, I mean, I would think that TF is stronger than Morgana. But I do understand that you're keeping, you're keeping the Morgana for Moonlight. Yeah, I wasn't sure if I was going Moonlight or not, but I knew I was going to sell them anyways. Uh, Diana was just the strongest unit that I had at the time, apart from the Wukong. So what do you, what uh, do you, like, how do you feel about Deathblade here? Uh, well, I am a little bit hesitant on the uh, Deathblade. I, I don't actually remember what happens uh, coming up, but yeah, I think I slam the death blade pretty darn soon okay because I'm, I'm thinking like wukong with the death blade is actually pretty strong yeah i think that's also uh that i also slept it on him so it's either death blade wukong or or gun blade diana yeah so you're not like this guy with three like i, I mean he has a gun blade he has a 
um, Rage Blade, but he's not making. Is that that is a sword, right? Yeah, Gun Blade, Rage Blade. He's not making either. That's also bad. Because I had a deep discussion with Daniel yesterday, and I mean, here this this game is like this one is fine, but like, how do you ensure that you place well in a game? You stay healthy and you try not to waste gold. Okay, and a very important, like, another important aspect. You play your strongest board. Yes, and like, what, like, why do you play your strongest board? Like, apart from staying healthy and getting gold? To give you a better chance of eliminating as many units as possible. So if, even if you lose, you are not going to lose by as much. Okay, and the flip side of that? Uh, if you make sure to itemize, you might have a much better chance at winning. And, like, winning and winning with more units. Oh, yeah. Because here you do 8 damage, which is nice. Like, by doing a lot of damage early, that means even if you kind of fuck up late, you can still get a good placement, because other people just die. So if, okay. you, won, if you won by 1 unit, you still get a win, but he only loses 2 HP. But by, by making him lose 8 HP, it's, it's a lot better. And that's like the whole point of like pushing your advantage. Oh yeah, yeah this is the death that kills. Yeah. Okay. And then I think I buy the Yashu. Yeah. Perfect! That's exactly what I was going to say. You don't need to sell these things, but this is terrible, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, good. It is very, very, very terrible, but um, um, I knew I still kept the Vanguards. But no, I mean, like, move the Yasuo not so he's not next oh. to Wukong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think my, uh, I think I realized that a round or two later but oh yeah, god because you were when, like when doing I'm transitioning it's just um like you were doing I, stuff I, on I, the I... bench and bench stuff can be done during combat board stuff has to be done before yeah and who gets the rod and why uh as far as i recall it is diana to give her bigger shield and more damage interesting i would argue that it's Callista, so that she, she like she already has one item if you give her another item, it'll make her kill. Cause like her her kill ability yeah, is based, based on, on AP. AP. Yeah. Yeah. And since she has a death, like if she didn't have the death blade, it's Diana. But because she has the death blade, you should probably give her the rod as well. Does that make sense, right? Like. Yeah. You're trying I, to make I, her stronger, I, I so give her everything. Remember who gets it? I think it's Diana. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. You, I'm sharing my screen, right? You see it. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it was Diana. Like it was Diana, but like. Also, this positioning is not it. But I guess you didn't have enough time to scout. But, like, in general, um, you want to have, like, Yasuo somewhere in the back. Or, like, Bang or, like, something in the back. If you saw, like, my positioning. I did. Right? Like, if you have something in the back, that kind of protects the Kalista. Because if Yasuo was right here, like, not next to her, but one away, Zed would fight with him. So that she would actually yeah. kill everything. But like this is not good. When when your like most itemized carry dies like this, it's not good. I mean, thankfully you're strong enough to just barely win here. But you could have won by more. I definitely could. You could have probably won like 4-0. And we always buy everything. Just always get in the habit of always buying everything, please. It's really important. Like always always have like either 10 gold or or uh like always end in a zero so like 10 20 zero yeah i'm trying to get into the habit of that and here i am considering to go for vanguard uh which i believe i do on the next round i am not quite i was not quite fast enough to get garen and hecarim okay to sell this with the trade my reactions were a little bit short um this should not happen like you cannot waste one turn thinking. No, okay. I'm... Yeah. 
Yeah, just like you cannot, you don't have the luxury of wasting a turn thinking. Like, yes, Garen Hakarim would probably be stronger. Probably. So put them in. Alternatively, like, you can pre-level and like not put them in. But it's like, um, you should think these things through before. Like, you can watch my stream, other streams, and just kind of understand these things so that once you're in game, you cannot waste time on them. Because most of my decisions I are, are like kind of already made. Like if I see this, I'm like, okay, so it's four Vanguard. Actually, when do you play four Vanguard? Uh, preferably early game or late game if you have an Ari carry. Uh, not the answer I'm looking for. So like, uh, why would you play? Game. Why would you play four Vanguard here? Uh, because most uh, units are not yet itemized, and which means that they mostly do uh, basic attacks, 8k, 80 damage. Okay, I like the logic, but I would like you to actually look around. Because it, it takes like 5 seconds if you just click 1 or 3 to just look at other boards. And if yeah. you see, like, if you see 3 mages and like 2 cultists or something, and uh, a lot of Teemos, then it, it does nothing. If you see mostly, as you mentioned, physical damage, then four Vanguard is good. So it should just like it should be yes, mostly at the, at the beginning of the game, it's physical damage, but just to confirm in this lobby, which takes like three seconds of of like of like all this, which is essentially thirty seconds of nothing. You could have clicked one 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 and looked at every board, and then decide okay, it's Vanguard I'm or. Still not that you know. fast at scouting. I'll. I, I, I still don't take information in as fast as I want to, but I am getting faster. Like, you just, okay, you just kind of skim the boards. It's just, I started scouting before I started processing it. It's more about, like, getting in the habit of looking at other boards often. Like, whether you actually get any, like, real data from it is the next step, but at least doing it is, like, the first step. Okay, like, actually looking at other people's boards. I have to do that. You can, do, you can look at other people's boards. The next step is analyzing their boards, but that comes kind of naturally. That comes like, um, do you drive? No, no, I don't have a driver's license okay. yet. But it's like, or, or ride a bicycle. You know how to ride a bicycle. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just like, you had to learn how to do it, and now you just sit on the bicycle, you don't have to think. So, if you learn to scout, your brain will kind of learn to look at the boards and analyze them for you, if that makes sense. Because like, once, yeah. you, once you see enough boards, you can kind of, like, that's kind of what uh, Aru, like, uh, tried to tell me, that I need to be able to analyze board strength more. So that's what I've been focusing more recently. Like, analyzing board strength and knowing if I'm strong or not. And here, by the way, if it's if it's a duelist, it's always fewer over Yasuo. Uh, I, I should have told that <laughs> one through, yeah. Why is it fewer over Yasuo? Uh, because we are stunned, yes, you just deals damage. Yeah, exactly. You, you, you're not, you're not lacking damage. Like, you have amazing damage, but you don't have enough survival. So, a little bit more damage. Like, Fiora just has more survival because for 1.5 seconds or 1 second, she's, she's like immune to damage. So it helps a lot. And her stun would be wonderful here. I think, um, the, uh, the, the, the thing that makes me not really consider her is how much we have heard she is bad she is not good etc etc about fiora she is not strong enough uh those kind of things and that's oh, probably God. why i'm not yeah. yeah i was just a little bit slow on that one um you you should have sold it like as soon as like as soon as you see that you're winning like you, sh you should sell it here like there's no need to wait you sell it here well the thing is i wasn't actually thinking i was gonna win but at that time. As soon as Yasuo dies, you won. As soon as you pop Yasuo the first time, you won. Here, you won. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's just a question of me needing to uh, react a little bit faster. Okay, and since you did not... Since you did not get to... Uh, you did not get to 10, you should pre-level. And you can do that right now. You can press you can press F at any at any point on the carousel. If you press F, you will pre-level. Okay. 
I actually didn't know you could do that as the uh, shop thing has disappeared. Um, F is just buying experience. You can do that at, at any point. <laughs> so what do we want here? Uh, I'm going for the Negatron Club because I wanted to uh, grab myself a... Uh, what's it? Uh, Ionic. An Ionic Spark. Uh, I wanted to get an Ionic Spark so Callista would do more damage and I put it on Diana so she jumps in the middle of all the uh, opponents. But you have a Deathblade already. Uh, yep, yeah, and Callista just does more damage. I, like here looking at your board, I still think you have enough damage and you would benefit more from a, uh, from a... Um... So I have ability. Yeah, which is the... Um... Oh, what, it's called, what is it called? Armor Rod. It's the... Um... Locket. Locket. Locket, yeah. If you put the locket and like, you lo like, how much HP do you get? Like, how much HP do you have? That's like 600, 900, uh, like another 600. So that's what? 6, 8, uh, 6, 12, uh, 2. Okay, maybe you have like 3, 3k HP, like 3.5k HP. Locket gives you 375, I believe, times 4, if you level up times 5. So that effectively gives you, like, gives your whole team, like, what is that, 50% more HP? If I'm doing the math right, more or less. Not bad. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it is. Um, I think it's just one of those things I haven't really thought about. But, okay. Um... I've also gotten really used to when I have defensive carousels, I always go for magic resist because I know those are just going to be riven, riven, and riven, and riven. So I, I, I've just gotten into some weird habit of always going for magic resist. I don't know why. Um, okay, but, but what do you do with all the cloaks? Uh, I build D claws, I build uh, QSS. I build, uh, yeah, decals and QSS primarily. Okay, because I think cloak is one of the shittiest items. And you're most likely going to get one, if not two cloaks, two, one, if not two cloaks naturally. So if you get more cloaks from the carousel, you're just going to end up with even more cloaks. Like, how would you feel I if... I use them for chalices. They're, um, not, like, they're not that bad, but I, I, I still feel that armor is better. Just in general. And let's just, let's just uh, look at this. Also, it's one more gold, by the way. So it's like, it's a better item. Maybe you don't agree, but it's also one more gold. Yeah, that's true. And Ionic, Ionic is typically not it. Like, Ionic is never that great. I, I feel, I feel better, I feel better about... Um, here, oh, definitely the locket. At this point, like locket is terrible later. Okay, okay, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. So then, what is the Diana like? Don't you want Fiora over Diana now? You, you don't. Okay. So you value two star Fiora more than four duelists. Uh, yeah, at least, uh, at least this round I do, I'm still looking a little bit around, and I don't think I have just, I just didn't, I don't think I've made the decision to go for it yet, because I sometimes have to think a little bit longer to, uh, make that decision. Okay. But yeah, it's really, I should go for four through this like, straight up. Like, there's never, like, there should not be any thinking in the game, it should just be executing. Like, it should just be, you should just know four duelists is better, always put it in. Like, so when you see the, when you see the Fiora, it's like, okay, four duelists. Right? So, like, these scenarios, you should either, like, you can ask me, you can ask anyone in the Discord, you can, like, map it out on um, a builder, like, really think it through. So then when it happens, you already know. Because if you're thinking in game, like, whether this is stronger or isn't, when the answer is quite obviously it is, and you, you can already know that from like empirical data, you should always just have like a instinct, like a instant uh, feeling, and just do it. 
Because I think you're, you're, you're thinking way too much. Uh, yeah, probably yes. But, but that is a very common problem for me at least. I always think a little bit too much. Okay. That's but, not only in game. Yeah, I mean, of course, we bring our personalities into the game. But, like, for this, you should you should think a lot before the game and uh, a bit less in like during the game. Because there's there's more important like again ten seconds have gone by, like this should not happen. You should be doing something, like looking at like I I'm looking at chat most of the time. But like if you're not looking at chat, you should be looking at other people's boards. Yeah, I you, probably should. You should like definitely you're on a four win streak. You should look at the four people you played and look at the people you haven't played and make sure you beat them, like. You, you definitely look at Skin Shaver and make sure you position to beat him. That's like very, very important. And here, like now, now, this, I hope this is not the board. Please tell me this is not your board. It is not the board. Thank God. As far as I recall, at least. It's, it's either Fiora or Pike. It's never three duelists and one assassin. Uh, yeah. Pike gives you stun. Fiora gives you six du six duelists. So you you, like right now. I mean right now, Pike is probably better than than Yasuo because you get you get assassins and you get stun. Okay, and never like, understand that he's a exile. Like whenever you put him on the board, he always needs to be separated. Uh, I I I know I know that uh, instinctively. Yeah. But I still fail to see that for so many rounds. Okay. Uh, here it's Sal Garen by Pike. You could... Uh, by the way... By the way, you could actually be playing Cultist right here. If you bought the Pike. Oh, yeah, I know. Right? Or like have him so that you level up. And you can play Cultist next level. Like Pike and TF. Machine Shao over... Oh, okay. There we go. Uh, can you explain why Machine Shao over Wukong? Machine Shao over Diana or... No, no, no. Uh, the, the Ionic Spark. Why is it on Machine Shao and not Wukong? Uh... I'm not no, I can't. I mean, look at look at like just look at the health bar: three hundred, six hundred, seven fifty, three hundred, six hundred, nine hundred, eighteen hundred, or something. Wukong yeah. has more than twice the amount of HP. He's more than likely to survive longer. He's more than likely to to proc Ionic Spark longer. Okay, it's just like Ionic yes. Spark should be on the unit that survives the longest, to get full value. You don't need to like sell anything right now. You should wait for the outcome of this of the fight. Uh, two, four, six, eight. Right. So now you should buy something since you can't sell. Okay. That like so that's like that's some overthinking right there. Cause right now you you just chill. You cannot get any gold so I don't know why you would tell the Lulu there's another Lulu in chop if you find a two star Lulu just put her in nice lucky shop this Callista feels so exposed doesn't it doesn't it look bad don't you feel bad about this Callista to an extent I do um, but uh... Yeah, again, I might be overthinking some things, but other things I am, I take so long to think through. Because, like, um, essentially the way it works, like, if you put items on a unit, that means they're a powerful tank or a powerful carry, right? Or, like, yeah. that that's how you should think about it. Like, I'm giving them items that I think they're strong. So, if I think this is an important unit... I want to put stuff around it to protect it. Yeah, and that would preferably be something like a Jax on the behind and uh, Wukong on the front. 
um, well, Wukong would be here and would have the Ionic Spark and you could have the, the Jin and the Jax. Like one, one behind her, one in front of her. Or even better positioning is if you put her in the nook over here and you put one in front and one behind. So if anything jumps, it'll get interfered, in, intersected by this, like in the back. And if anything comes up from the front, it'll get intersected from the front. Yeah. Art, Art, Artagus asked me about this. Daniel asked me about it. Like, why I put my unit right here? Because this is like the safest spot. It's either this corner or, or this nook. And I like this nook even more because nothing can actually hurt you there. Assassins will fight whatever's in front of them. And frontline will fight whatever, like, everything will fight here. So everything in the, everything attacking the front will hit the front. Stuff attacking the back will get stuck in the back. So if it's right here, it's like the safest spot. This spot and this spot right here. Those are the two safest spots. If you don't know that, now you know that. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the way you make them safe is by putting stuff in front and behind. Sorry? I think someone actually places a Callista there on the left side just behind, uh, behind the front line at some point. Yeah. So your Callista is taking unnecessary damage. And now she's dead. But I think if the Pike wasn't hitting her, may she would definitely stay alive longer. She definitely would, yes. Yep. Yeah. I'm I'm not hundred percent sure if Pike killed her or not. I'm not hundred percent sure. I think it was the blind, but like, if there was a unit behind her, like you just barely win this again. You could have you could have done more damage. Like winning is good. Doing more damage is better. And we're scouting. Yay! Yeah, that that that's good. That's good. Callista placement actually. That is good. The only thing that's bad is that there's nothing next, like, back here. There should be a Fiora back here. Fiora back here, and this is perfect. And the GA should be on the Callista, not the Yasuo, because he's completely useless. Right? But, like, if, if the if the Fiora's back here, what can what can hurt, hurt her? If, like, Jax is over here, Fiora back there, nothing can actually get to her. And you, you definitely lose to that board. So... Um, you're probably going to make the right play and you're not going to know about the, why it's the right play. So, yeah. So why do you not level up here? Because I don't have anything to put out on the board. Um, oh, wait. You have a Thresh? I have a Thresh to put out there. You have a Thresh? You have another Jin Chao? Uh... Yeah, I don't know. Okay. So the correct answer, why you made the correct play, is because Skin Shaver is just going to slap you really hard, no matter what. So by not leveling, you keep you maintain 50 gold, and you know you're going to lose the streak as soon as you face Skin Shaver. That is, like, that is the right play. Alternatively, the right play is to spend the 12 gold and roll like two or three times to try to get some upgrades. Like you can get Jin two, uh, yeah, Jin two, Yasuo two, uh, maybe like another another good filler unit if you roll a little bit of gold. Because if you level up, you'll be at thirty nine. You can roll two or three times, buy some units, and you should just kind of have like a feel for this. Like, I am the strongest right now. I want to stay strong. That means I level up and I roll down to thirty, maybe twenty, not not below twenty. 30 gold, like, rolling down to 30 would be fine. If you have a unit to add right now, you level up at it. If you don't, you can level up and roll a little bit. Level up to 35 on the next round. But this is a perfect interval, right? Yeah, and I am really, really bad at the perfect interval thing. Um... I, I want to do it, but sometimes I just get really, really uh, panicky if I uh, start losing uh, HP and such. Okay, so that's that's another thing we'll, we'll look at and we'll work on. But like, right now, if you're winning by this much, I suggest level up and roll a bit. Or, or like, understand, okay, I'm staying at 50 because I'm playing this guy and he'll smack me. 
which you, you cannot win here. There's no way no, you win this. I, I, I wouldn't win there no matter what I did. Actually, if you if you hit Jin 2, you win here. Like, Jin 2 wins this. Pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Jin 2 wins this, to be honest. If you had Jin Zhao 2, I'm, like, you win this. And if you have a bit more, more stuff in the front, you also win this. Because that why duelists are not that great is because there's no way for them to actually kill your Kalista. You see that? Like, Kalista is just killing everything. Yes, and still the Yashu goes back there. If you had her here, if you had her here instead of here, that would not happen. If you had her in, in, yeah. the, in this nook. Yeah, I think I figured that out after this, uh, as I kind of start to realize why he's doing it. Yeah, okay. So I did actually have done something during the game. <laughs> that's great. I mean, that's, that's why we play, like, to learn. But yeah, leveling up, rolling a little bit. You can beat him, and it's like, there's like two things to this. You maintain your streak, you maintain your HP, and you end his streak. So it's like, so many important things happen. So like, ending his streak is also a big thing. So it's like, yeah, it helps you, it helps you make sure that he does not get too far ahead. Because no one else is strong enough to beat him. Okay. Okay. I mean, this is not terrible, but like, yeah, I, I prefer leveling at perfect intervals or just pre-leveling. I guess it's not that bad. Oh no. What is this positioning? Uh, that was me thinking she would have to walk less uh, if she was a little bit further up ahead, as I know her range is actually a little bit shorter, so she doesn't hit from the back line. Okay, that's Callista. But what about if she's not dead? Isn't it better if she's not dead? It, it, de it definitely is. Okay. Uh, I, I move her over next round again. This so, was one of the panic positionings. But like, she needs to have a bodyguard. Do you know, like, I guess it's dumb, but do you know American football? Uh, not exactly. But well. like, have you heard of a quarterback? Yep. So the quarterback is the guy who throws the ball, right? Yep. So if you have a quarterback, it's kind of important that you protect him so he can throw the ball and you can like, like make a play. I don't know American football either, but like if he can throw the ball, you can make the ball go further up the field and, and get points. Right? Yeah. And typically, the easiest way to, to like beat the opposing team is to tackle the quarterback before, before he throws the ball. So this is kind of like what's happening. You have your star player, your quarterback right here. And you're not protecting him or her. So it's like, if you have the star player, you need to protect him or her. So like... At least like a Fiora, in, a Fiora right here. Like, or even behind her. At least a random Fiora. Because Fiora has a stun, so Fiora will, will hit a few times. Then she'll go into her um, stun mode and absorb some damage. Then she'll stun. So if you just have the shitty little Fiora over here, she can buy you like three, four seconds. Obviously, there's too much damage in the front. Maybe Akali would snipe her as well, but like... You, you end up winning this, which is good, but like I don't like the fact that you let your carry die. Like your, your carry is too important to just get killed like that. And this, like, this applies to any carry at any stage of the game, right? Like, any carry should not be this exposed. So what do we want now? I think I'm going for a go for a HOJ on Wukong. Yeah, acceptable. You have a random glove, like, what are you going to do with it? Make a hodge. Three cost, ho okay. <laughs> okay. Uh... No, that was the other game I did that. Uh... So Hodge is extremely good on Wukong. By the way, this Wukong, if he had the death plate, it would be so much better. Yeah, I hope you... I, I, I know, I know. If he had death plate and Hodge, like he's he's two star, he's chosen, just use him as a carry. Wukong is a great, great uh 
like Warwick or any kind of damage carry, like Wukong and Yasuo are perfect one cost chosens. That, that can carry items for your four cost like Jin, Ash, Warwick kind of guys. Yeah, I I figured that much. I I figured that part out uh, after we played uh, or when we played earlier. Yeah. Hey, I'm actually transitioning into cultists this time. Oh what? What? You are? What? Where's the cultist? I think so. You just added a random. Two star TF. Okay, TF. Okay, that's uh, <laughs> that's not where TF should be. Um, how does TF work? Uh, TF throws out uh, cards in a cone. Uh, uh -huh. Targeting wise, I don't know. There, targeting uh, is random. Okay. Uh, the best place he can be is in the absolute uh, corner, so that he is completely surrounded. As far as I recall. Oh Sur well. He should be relatively up front because if you like if you know like geometry it like the the closer he is to the fight the more likely the cards are are to hit more units because if he throws the middle card at the kenny you see my mouse right yep if he throws the middle card at the kenny the two other cards might go there and there if he is where Kalista is if he throws the middle card at the kenny the two other cards are going to split and hit the other Kenny and hit hit the uh, Jinx. So if you put him in the far corner, his cards are going to go like one card there, one card off, one card off. If you put him closer, his cards are actually going to be clumped up. Hmm. Yeah, I see. Yeah. So that's like how, how his cards work in like simple, I believe it's called vectors, I think. Uh, yes. So like the split of the the split of the cards, like yeah. He he kind of moved up, but like now yeah now he moved up, but look at the cards. You see the cards? You see one card hits and the two fly off. I see. I, I see your point. Yeah, I mean right now, like right now, obviously that's because you have to walk up. But like when everything was clumped up here, it would have been better. So uh, yeah. As I recall, I won this one. Yeah, you did, you did. Well, quite a few units. That's good, you did a lot of damage. There we go, that's good positioning. TF is not the perfect protection because he's also squishy and he's also a carry. So like, if you have uh, two star players that, are, that need protection, you should not put them next to each other without protection. But we know that for next time, like at least the, the I mean, the Xin Zhao should be there. Like, imagine you have Hodge, Deathblade, and Ionic Spark on Wukong. Ionic Spark is amazing because it targets like two rows away. So I so he'll get even more assists. So he will stack his he'll have a Hodge, which will be healing half of the time. He'll have Ionic Spark to do more damage and proc more death blades. So like you should, yeah, and then the game we played together, I mean, you had a Jeweled Gauntlet on Wukong, which does nothing. Because he does not benefit from Jeweled Gauntlet, his, his spell is physical, not magical. If you didn't know that. Uh, Actually, no, he didn't benefit from it. Yeah, it's physical. His attack is, is purely right. physical. So it cannot, it can, it can crit physically, but it cannot crit, mag crit magically. Yeah, but like, always try to put as many items as you can on one unit. Like the uh, ideally, ideally, like if we do some sort of um, builder, like my favorite comp, and I think what one of the comps that's strongest right now is this and this. So then you want something like I don't know if like I'm not gonna go for perfect items, but like whatever items I can think of, anything useful, sure, whatever, like this, and then something like like this for example sure okay and then you have the other then you have the other units right yeah when you're going like yeah. and you have Jin with all the attack items and with all the like other defensive items and then the rest of the composition you know the composition right it doesn't matter like but they don't have anything they might have like a, a chalice 
or uh, a Zeke's or a Zephyr. So if they have that, but like, you should try to focus on always making your units strong. Because one item is, is okay, two is good, and three is great. Well, if you have like one item here, one item here, like these are not important items, but like, if you have too many items split up, then they lose effectiveness. Because Jin with Deathblade is good. Deathblade and IE is so much stronger, and the J makes them even more strong. So it's like, it's not, um, how do we put this? It's not additive, it's exponential. Do you understand that? Yeah, I yeah. Do. So like, rather than adding like one plus one, it's like, oh, he has one item. Now he has two, he's like three times as strong. Now he has three, he's like ten times as strong. So that's kind of how it works. Yeah, see this? Like, it's not great because I think a one star Wayne or two star Wayne. It's two star, I think. It's but like, two star Wayne, three star Nidalee, and I am pretty certain I lose that one. But uh, I like the fact that all the items are on the Wayne. Even though they're not great items, the fact that all of them are on one unit make Wayne really strong. If they were, like, I would prefer them being on a different unit, like, like, uh, maybe on Teemo. Like, Teemo should have Morello, Hodge, and Giant Slayer, and Thresh should have Titans. That would be, that would be perfect. But, like, at least the fact that they're on one unit makes the, the Wayne a bit stronger. And obviously, since it's a three-star Nidalee, that, then, yeah. You can't beat that. And the Giant Slayer is no, also I really can't. good. Yeah. <coughs> By the way, Morello on Italy is never it. Never it. No, no. Oh, I know that. Then yeah. Italy is single target. Why the hell would you put a Morello on the single target unit? Oh, exactly. I would not even put Morello on Lux. Um... Lux in special cases, yes. But, oh, there we go. Why do you have to sell the Lux? I don't get why you have to sell her, but okay. Uh, that was just me uh, making a different decision. I think it was actually to remain above 50 gold, but... But you did. I should know by now that you always get gold from free browns. You don't always get gold from free browns, but look at this. If you kept, if you had kept the Lux, okay, now you get Irelia. You could have uh, made Divine Spat, and you're on your way to Warwick, essentially. This is kind of, if you go War, if you don't go Divine Spat, uh... You picked up a cloak, so you're most likely to have a um, to get another cloak. So this would be divine spat, and you can have QSS Warwick, and like you're you're chilling. You have Irelia, so that's like something to consider. Okay, please don't do this. This is too soon. Like putting in like I know I do it as well, but if you can, if you can avoid doing this, then you should do it. Then you shouldn't do it. Like, don't just put gold in levels. If, like, since it does nothing for you, right? This 12 gold did absolutely nothing. Oh, God. Oh, God. Please yeah, tell... Yeah, I know, I know. Please. You know. Like, yeah, I, I, I could almost hear where this one was going when I, uh... <laughs> the curse of God Never rolled before level 8 has been one of the rules that I have uh, had uh, kind of learned to follow. Okay, rolling is not bad, but it's extremely bad if you pre-level first. Or like if you put XP in levels. So I'm not, like, I don't think that the, the decision, I don't think that the decision to roll here is completely wrong. Okay, but putting XP in levels before is, is just extremely ter terrible, and never do it again. Alright, you're not first, ESP second. Uh, like, um, so, the way you need to look at this is, you get to, you get to 4 one and you need to tell yourself, am I strong enough right now, yes or no? And, like... You should never just put gold in levels. That's like the easiest way to avoid this. Never put gold in levels unless you're leveling up. Okay? Yeah, I think I, uh, yeah, all right. That's like a golden rule you should always follow. Unless, like, unless you're pre-leveling or leveling up, just don't put gold in levels. Because then you end up like putting gold in levels and panicking and then rolling and it's just like, it's terrible for your econ. And you didn't pick up the Irelia, the, the first Irelia.
Okay, 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 okay. So why did you love why did you roll there? I have no goddamn idea to be fair. I do not okay. remember what went through my head. I think I was looking for an upgrade for the Sinchao. Um or Callista or Callista or, or Jax or something. Yeah. Yeah, I was looking for an upgrade. So if you hadn't wasted twelve gold on, on like levels that did nothing, uh you could have just rolled like three four times and tried to hit an upgrade so that's like you need to understand what you want to achieve and then execute like rolling once uh we know the math it's like very unlikely that it'll happen right that you will get upgrades so either you're like okay i am going to roll at least five times and maybe get an upgrade or i'm not going to roll at all yeah like you need to make the decision i'm Rolling to get stronger, or I'm not rolling to get stronger, or I'm not rolling, but not like I'm gonna roll a little bit, because that was just two gold down the drain. Uh, there we go. That was the hodge. Yeah, nice. I knew that one was coming eventually. Just didn't recall when. But look how hard he smacks now with divine and hodge, because he rolled damage. Yeah. So I would be getting the the Irelia here, but yeah. I okay, Irelia. Is, uh, do you not value Irelia, or because Irelia uh, is one of one of the most insane units? Because she she is uh, divine and adept. Um, enlightened is no longer a trait, but she is divine and adept. So you should try to like use her for for the divine and adept tags which are really really good so i don't know what what, what the hell happened to the evelyn got the spirit oh she got sp from where Callista. oh she got okay that's good that that's perfect yeah so but like the whole point is uh evelyn is attacking elise yep. which means Callista can kill her so this is the positioning I was talking about. There is something behind her and something in front of her. And she's in the yeah, perfect spot. that was the point when I uh, actually remembered that. Um, yeah, I had a few moments of clarity during that game. Great, great. And, and like, I had so many moments where I felt god awfully stupid. Okay, but like at least it's like, it's looking... Okay, it's not probably not a win, but it. I lose it actually. Yeah, you do lose this, but like it could have been a lot worse. Yeah, it could. Yeah, we're still leveling up. That's completely fine. Oh, I do nothing for a solid ten seconds again. Yeah. 30 seconds go by, nothing happens, yeah. No scouting, no repositioning. So, okay, okay, why is, why is scouting extremely important right now? Because a lot of people choose to play uh, some kind of either shade combo or... Um... Or some, well, not so many play assassins anymore, but they play ninjas. Um, Even more important, that's that's scouting every round. That is scouting every round. Um, determining which uh, position would be best to put your team in so they hit the most possible. Correct, That, but that's every round. Why is scouting this round in particular even more important? What's this happening next round? Where I'm gonna see which items people are most likely gonna pick up. Um, that's even more advanced than I'm capable of doing. Good, <laughs> but yeah, if you can if you can guess what they're gonna go for, then yeah. So that's over my my uh, my pay grade. Uh, but like one thing you, you haven't mentioned, which is, which I can actually do already at my level, and you should be able to do as well. 
Like, what, what's going to happen next level? Uh, I mean, next, next, after Carousel, what's going to happen? Uh, we're going to get our final items, and then people are going to level to 8 and start transitioning. So I should keep an eye on which unit people have. Uh, which units people have. Correct. So I know they're going. Yes, yes, and yes. So if you scout this round, or at least during Carousel, you can see, okay, we have Riven, Riven, Warwick, Warwick, okay. No one is going for Ash. You try to get Ash. And you know that when you roll, your odds of getting Ash are like 70% higher. I don't know exactly, but like 70% higher than, than anything else. Because people are going for Rivens and Warwicks, so Ash is going to be uncontested. So you're like, okay, I'm going to go Ash. Yeah, and uh, you're probably going to see exactly that in a few minutes. Oh my god, yes. Very good. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Uh, but I am not scouting uh, this one out. I just get a chosen Ash. Okay, and so... I end up my items on her. Great. I'm very happy that that happens, but you should kind of know that it's the right thing. Like, you should know that, okay, I'm looking for a chosen Ash, or, like, I'm looking f to go some sort of Ash comp. Yeah, so the problem I have with that is whenever I look for something specific, I do not see it. Okay, so, so I've chosen to stop looking. I look for one of three or four carries, and that's uh, whatever fits or whichever of them is the one I get is what I build around. That is partially correct, but it's like if you get one Ash and one Jin, and you know that there are six Jins out of the pool, you should probably just consider that you're going to go Ash. Like yes, you can you can you can roll down and find find uh, three like two star gin, find three gins. But also you know that people are picking up ribbons, people are picking up Casios, people are just picking up things you need for the gin comp. Well, if you go for Ash and you see nobody else is going for Ash, you're not just like more likely to get Ash, but you're also more likely to get Kindred, more likely to get uh, like Ezreal, and then like the front line is the same, but like. You should always try to go for uncontested stuff. So what do we have right now? We have a belt and we have a sword. Yeah. And a belt. Yeah. Yeah, that's a GA. I like it. Yeah, I was thinking the double Deathblade was going to be a little bit over the top. Uh, GA Deathblade Hodge is amazing on Ash. Or, or I was thinking Six was not going to be the one I was running with. Oh my, okay. This is 12 seconds you, that you could have done in two. Okay? Yeah, I need to think ahead about what I'm going to do, what I'm going to sell, and... Uh, then what I'm rolling for. I have no idea why you sold the Callista. Like, you get to 50. Uh, sorry, no, no, no. You get to 8, you sell the Wukong, and you start rolling. Okay? Yeah. And if you get 2-star Callista, that's a good thing. You can play her for a bit longer. Right? Yeah. And this is not it. You're being super, super greedy. Look at your board. It is incredibly weak. It's like, it's shit. Like, you have... And, like, it's shit. And the reason it's so shit is because the items are not, like, not there. If you had GA, Deathblade, Hodge, um, Wukong, it would be kind of okay. But because the items are scattered, and you have, like... One item here on a two star, one item on a one star, component on a one star, and then like a random, uh, sorry, two star, two star. Like this board is super weak. And if you, if you uh, don't sell your chosen and roll now, you're just going to get slapped for two rounds. Which I'm pretty sure is going to happen. Way too long to make that decision. Holy shit. And also that decision can be made, like, that decision is made on the carousel and executed once the round starts. 
Yeah. Because the 30 seconds, like those 30 seconds are the most crucial 30 seconds in the game. Essentially. Leveling to 8, you sell the Wukong and you start rolling for, for Ash, Warwick, or Jin. And you can roll down to, let's say, like even like, even close to 0. Like ideally you roll down to 20 gold here. So you can re-econ up after this round and on, on the creep round. Yeah? So, uh, uh, after creeps or on creeps? Okay, so since you level to 8, like, if you're cool with sacking 2 more rounds, that's fine based on your HP. That is completely fine. I don't like doing it because if you look at the HP, like, everyone's relatively close. Like, this guy's first... And then there's like second, third, and then these guys are not, you're not that far ahead. And by getting completely stomped these two rounds, you're going to be somewhere over here. Like you're going to be at 40 each, 40 ish HP. I would say maybe, maybe these guys are a bit weaker than, than they should be, but they should smack you pretty hard. That and you should actually what happens. I get completely stomped, completely rounds. stomped and you drop to 40 HP. Something along those lines. Yeah. yeah. And I don't think that's worth it. Just from like my field perspective, I don't think it's worth it to greet this much gold and drop down to 40 HP. Okay. So this should have been done last round. Yeah? Like selling the Wukong and rolling. Agree? Yeah. Good. Um, we use our hotkeys, please. Right? And, okay. There's a kid and Yumi. You always get them. If you're going to start rolling, you always buy kid and Yumi. Because what if you get an Ash? Right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. And then you get the Ash. Um, can you play Ari with this? Uh, no. Not with those eyes. Yeah. So you, you can just ignore the Ari. Like, the, the let's say, Masters Plus play... Is to buy the Ari? Is to buy the Ari for what reason? Spirit. No, 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 no. Oh, uh, no! To uh, increase the chances of the other four costumes. Exactly. That is the only reason you would buy her, and I suggest until you at least get to diamond, that you don't bother with this shit. All right. Just buy the units you want, because it it gets confusing. It confuses me sometimes as well when I have like a full bench of like. What is all this shit? What am I doing? So it's just much easier if you buy what you want, what you need. But if you're buying Ash, you're always buying Kidred. Because right. especially if with these, these items are crazy. Like Deathblade, GA, Hodge on Ash. If she has a Hunter, she's like, her Hunter proc is going to help stack the Deathblade. Which is completely insane. Yeah, like... This is taking like way too much time. You've you've used you've used hotkeys before, so I don't yeah. understand. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm really not good friends with uh, D and F. Um, it is probably a remnant from back when I actually played normal. Though I I never knew how to move my fingers from uh, Q W E R down to D and F. I barely even uh, managed to <laughs> remember to place boards. Oh, we got a very nice suggestion here. You can change the hotkeys. To Q and W? If that'll help, yeah. Hmm. If that'll help you, you can change it to Q and W. Yeah. I, I mean... I think I can try that, actually. I was a dumbass as well. Like, I came from... I don't remember now what it is, but in Underlords, there were different hotkeys. And instead of just like, okay, I can just set my uh, uh, buy XP and sell and sell unit to the same hotkeys as it ended in Underlords, I learned the, the hotkeys for TFT. But like, if you don't want to use the hotkey D and F, you can just use QW. Oh no, W is for putting a unit in and out. So then you would need to figure out something else for taking it in and out. But like the hotkeys you need are scouting hotkeys, which are one and three. Then, uh, yeah, taking units in and out, which is W, selling units, which is E. Those are like the only hotkeys you need. And then space bar is to get, 
space bars to get back to your board. So yeah. like set up the hotkeys any way you any way you like, but just please use the hotkeys. Yeah, I'll try to do that. Oh, ugh, ugh. So now we have a Ari. Let's 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 see what Ari does. And we put in Lulu over Thresh. I have no idea why we did that, but okay. Wait, where where where, where did the Ash go? Oh God. Ah, uh, okay. So I guess. Like okay. There's a lot of things wrong. How how much can you take? Like how hard do you want me to drill you? Uh, well, uh, go for it. Okay. First of all, you're rolling on four five to upgrade your board, right? Which you which you which you ditched, which you did not do. Okay. Yep. It's always on four five. Why is it not on four six? Why is rolling on a 4-6 bad? So you can disrupt someone else's uh, win streak? No. Or loss streak? Why is 4-6 bad? Because you'll be going into a free round right Exactly. Out. So you just wasted... Cold. Like, here... Here, I'm like... Was it here? Yeah. Here, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you being so freaking greedy? Roll it fucking down and upgrade your board. And you chill at 50. So I'm thinking, okay, she just wants to be greedy and chill at 50. I respect that. And that, like, that's an okay, that's an okay way, okay way to do it. But then, here, you stick to the same plan. Right? Like, it's consistent, consistency. So, like, what you did on 4-5, I would say is wrong, but it's kind of acceptable. What you do on 4-6 is completely wrong and unacceptable. Okay? Yep. Yeah. Cuz like you either you either doing one thing or the other thing. You're not doing half of one thing and the half of the other thing. Like you're not econing and greeting and the worst thing that can happen right now is you win this round. If you win this round, uh, like you waste gold on rolling and what happens if you win this round? Uh, I uh, lose my interest. Yeah, oh. not just about the interest. You fuck up your loss streak. If yeah. you lose four times, you get two gold now and two gold next round. So that's yeah. four extra gold. If you win this round, which is not going to happen with the board you have, but if you had won this round, it would even fuck up like the additional gold you had from losing the previous round. Yeah, as far as I recall, I actually do lose that round. You, you, of course you do. Because do Ari does nothing. Ari does absolutely nothing. It's it's a pretty, like, pretty 12 gold... Like paperweight, and please, what is the best unit on? In, what is probably the best unit you have right now? Zillion. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So and why is he not in? Or I'd say uh, Elise, which I think I do next round. Sure. Great, but like, yeah. So you, you do recognize recognize these things, okay? Yeah. So, be because I just did. Yes, I have to think a little bit fast. I don't work that fast with my hands and my head at the same time. Okay, so... I, I still roll incredibly slowly well, compared to what I should. You're moving the mouse back and forth. Of course you roll, you roll, you roll slowly. Like, yeah. rolling is about looking at the five units, like focusing your eyes on the five units and pressing... I'm not going to press it now, but you press D, scan the units, press D, scan the units, press D, and like buy some and just keep pressing D. By going over here and clicking on this and then having to go back, that not only does it take away time by, by clicking on it, but like you have to kind of like refocus. Because you have to look over here, make sure you press, you press refresh, not by XP. It takes like half of the, well, maybe not half, but I would say close to half. Close to half of the turn and brain power is wasted on something that can be fixed by pressing one key. Yeah, so that's like a huge thing. That'll help you improve immensely once you start using it. It might be frustrating and you might mess it up like a few times, but once you have it down, it'll yeah. it'll help you so 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 much. Trust. I, I have messed that up more than once, believe me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I mean, so have I. It happens, but it's it's worth it that you just get it down. Yeah. And okay. 
Okay. Um, what are your options? So you haven't scouted, but that okay. If even if you haven't scouted, what are your options for this game? Uh, my with options? these items, with these items, what are you going? Uh, AB. Yeah. And I'm what going are the two comps? I'm going Ash or I'm going Walrus. Yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm probably not going Walrus. Okay, even better. So it's Ash or Jin. Yeah. Yeah. Agree? So we keep yep. everything for Ash Comp and for Jim Comp for Jin Comp. Yeah, which I do not do. Yeah, like so I like the reason why I don't like this wishy washy bullshit is because like you're at 30, you're at twenty gold right now, so using interest, which is completely pointless. Because your board is yeah. still kind of weak, you still lose this. You don't have a chosen. So like if you say you're chosen, you should kind of roll to find another chosen, like there has to be like a bigger decision, like um, like the big decision, like behind what you did. There, it, like it doesn't seem like there was a big decision. Like selling the Wukong, like yes, okay, but then what does that mean? That means I roll until I find a chosen, because all you did this round was get weaker. So you spent thirty gold to get weaker. Yeah, that's what I meant when I said I had big problems with yeah. my transitions. Yeah. So, think, like, I can't give you all the answers. Like, I need you to, like, learn how to think about these things. But, you yeah. like, you have the answers. It's just, like, you need to apply them. If it's Jin and Ash, then you ignore Ari. Like, you never need to buy Ari. You don't need to two-star Ari. It's completely useless. That's 12 gold sitting on the board that might even die without even ultiing. Yeah. Yeah? While, more importantly, keeping, keeping Riven... And keeping keeping Ash is very key in order to get uh, your like late game comp online. Yeah. And I don't understand this Lulu like just a I random. I want to get three mages. It was the first mage I found. Oh. Okay, that's sick. Okay, 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 okay. That's a good play. Good play. Holy crap. As I said, she did absolutely nothing. No, she cleaned up. She helped you preserve HP. Yeah. Respect. Okay. I did not see that. Okay, fine. Three mages. Okay, okay, okay. Um, yeah. I mean, you didn't, like, fumble it 100%. I'd say, like, 95% bad. Okay? <laughs> Is that better? Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know. I tried to salvage just something at that point. So 95% <laughs> bad, not... I do, I so far. <laughs> <laughs> not 195%. Oh god. Um what round is this? Wait. So why so are I we rolling roll. now? Yeah. Yeah? I shouldn't roll. Are you gonna die? Are you gonna die next round? Uh no. Like there's no way you can die next round, so you don't roll. Like the only reason you would do this if 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 you're about to die. Alrighty. Yeah. And you're not picking up Luxus? And you hit a hunter ash. Good. You'd sell that, I hope. Nope. Okay. Okay, and the Ari. So now you're at ten gold instead of like it could have been fifty, it could have been at least this round, I think, thirty. So that's really <laughs> a waste of gold. And okay. What the hell is the gin and the ribbon doing there? And the Aatrox? That was me picking up four cards so that I can sell later to get back some sort of gold. But if you sell them now, they are still there. If you sell them now, okay, you'll be at at least two of them. You'll be at twenty, right? Yeah. Because as soon as you hit chosen ash, you know you're not going Riven Comp, right? Yeah. I hope. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, you did stuff. I, I have no idea why the Ari's still there. No idea, to be honest. Right? 
So, sorry? To clean up to preserve HP, I think. Uh, I would, I, I would just... I can only think so many things at a time. But it's like, uh, you, you should know that Ari's out of place. Yeah, I knew that. The Ari and Elise and the Aatrox are kind of out of place. Like, yes, I'm, I'm fine with you playing them for now. But I still think Jax would be a lot better for Divine, for example. Yeah, I then... think I actually saw them one of the upcoming rounds. Either okay. The next round. So it's either Redemption or, or Warmogs, right? Uh, yeah. I think I end up going for Warmogs and Mage Cap. Oh because god. Because I had nothing better to use that special before. You just, just ignore it. That's the best advice I can give you. Just ignore it. Alrighty. And by, like, what I'm saying is, why don't you have it now? Why not uh, slam the Warmogs now? I didn't think that by head or I, yeah. Uh, I, I just... Like, what are you doing now? Can you, like... Like now you're not doing anything, right? You can you can put the belt on the on the Jinja, for example, and tear yeah. on and tear on the Lee. Yep. Like I that's agree. another thing a lot of people don't do, and I see like high level players do, and I'm trying to copy it more. Is like I'm sitting back, like chilling, watching the fight. No, I can actually influence the fight. I can actually put items on during the fight. Yeah, and I, I think I sometimes forget that or. Yeah. Something in me forget it, forgets it. So just like get in the habit, like okay, this item will help the fight, so I should I should use it. Like if the Xin Chao had a, maybe he would survive if he, if you slam the Warmogs right there. Like he could probably survive through that, like this shit. If the Xin Chao survives, then you do more damage. Or like you 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 survive like he survives longer, and the reason why why I hate the Ari. Why do you think I hate the Ari so much right now? Because she's incredibly unreliable. Okay. She does a lot of damage, but she is kind of unreliable and she needs to be protected. Or she needs a lot more damage than I've given her. True, true. But what's a bigger thing here about this Ari in particular? She does not fit in with anything. Good. She that's one of the big things. Enough. Yes, that's one of the big things. And another thing, why she's griefing your comp? She's free gold. Uh, she's very a lot of gold, yeah. And what we discussed earlier. She doesn't fit with anything, and yeah, it's that that fun. that's that's the the comp side. But like what we discussed earlier about like getting like the exponential strength. Oh, she only had she has an item that uh, Ash needs. She has Ash's glo Ash's Hodge. Yeah. So if if this if this rolls damage, Ash kills everything. If this rolls yeah. healing, Ash kills everything. Yeah. So this rolled I think it rolled healing. I think it did roll healing, yeah. So Ari is kind of like healing. Look at that. Wonderful. But imagine if that was healing on Ash. Yeah. If that had been healing on Ash, she's she's at full HP, she's at full HP, she's still at full HP. Like, maybe she dies, yeah, but then yeah, she would then get know, to full I HP. Know. Yeah. I, uh, so. I sell Aria for this, I think. And again, you have Chin and Riven, which are never gonna get that played. I still have not managed. To oh, we we sold one. We're keeping we're keeping Riven though. Okay. <laughs> well, you can't get everything you want. Yeah. Yes. No. No, you know, there's I really Chen. Oh, 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 there we, there we go. There we go. We're getting there. We're getting there. We are getting there. So I guess, I guess this is the trend with most like people in lower elo, that they get to the right, right thing eventually, but it takes them like extra turn or two. Yeah. That's yeah. uh, that's usually the uh, 
the biggest problem, and that often means sacking rounds and losing HP. So what is the de what is the mage cap for anyway? Uh, I think it was for when I uh, would eventually put in free elderwood, or at least I was planning to put in some elderwoods to give Ash even more damage. Okay, but it's like you can just use the tier and ignore the spatula. It's 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 probably the easiest way not to like, cause then you're like more inclined to put in mages for some reason, which is not it either. So, true. I mean, who gets the mage cap anyway? Who who gets the mage cap? You need to know uh, this. Cillian would be best. Yes. But I've apparently stuck it onto Sinchao because I thought he he would stack uh, his defenses faster. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. But like, I still think Cillian is the best. But like Xinxiao in this case is not that terrible. No, but uh, the thing I realized uh, afterwards was that now that I had taken all the mages out, I had absolutely no mages apart from Xinxiao. That's what I realized during the fight. Oh, I, great. I looked at. But look it at this fight. Me, look how uh, beautiful this fight is. Fight realized. But look how beautiful the Hodge is on Ash. Like, can you just like, I will slow it down because this is a thing of beauty. Like. Oh yeah, I know, I know. I've seen it all. Yeah, so that that's why you want these items on Ash. It's ridiculous. Like, she dies, and then, like, look at that. She's back at full HP. Again. And the Deathblade is stacking, and she just slaughters everything. Yeah. Unless she gets popped here. No, she doesn't get popped. Yeah. And the Shen. You have a one-star Shen, right? Yeah. So, maybe you want a two-star him? Okay. Possibly. Okay, why are we holding that, that one Ash? Um, I was thinking maybe to try to freestyle her as no one else was going for her. And I we know I this? I changed my mind on that a couple of rounds later. Do we know this though? Have you scouted for uh, the Ashes? Well, when I observed uh, doing the fights, I also do uh, remember roughly what people are okay. going for. Okay. And I hadn't seen an Ash yet, so yeah, I... Yeah, okay. I mean, the easiest way is to scout the boards and count Ashes. Uh, um, zero. Okay, yeah, I mean, like, like to do it. So... Three. So zero, right? You only one with the Ash. Yeah? Yeah. So, your win condition should be three-star Ash. Yeah, it should. I don't know, yeah, you were, you were walking back from your partner's place for the first game, but the first game I was so screwed. The first game I was completely screwed, and then I yeah, hit a Warwick. I, I came back just at the end, and I am definitely going to be watching that VOD because you talked about something I rarely have, which is a plan. Oh! <laughs> well, okay, yeah, I can tell you the plan uh, quickly. Like, if you see that you can three-star a four-cost unit because it's completely uncontested, you go for it. So, like, one game I won with 3-star Sejuani. One game I won with 3-star Warwick. This game would be the easiest to win if you 3-star your Ash. If nobody's going for Ash, you 3-star your Ash, you're winning this game. Simple as that. I am. No matter, like, what other trash you have, like, if you have something in front, she will just clean up. So, yeah. Okay. Finally, the Irelia, yeah. Kindred, you're not picking up Kindred for some reason? Nice, finally, we got the Kindred, yes, good. So it's like, it's, 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 it's like knowing these things in advance. Yeah, we dropped that, nobody cares about that, perfect. And another Ash, yeah, sure. That's why you don't want to roll, because now you're already under 50, and you're still rolling, you're still under 50, which is just like losing your gold for no reason, right? I think I'm looking for a stronger front line um, because I know I'm still weak compared to a lot of boards. I, I mean, no, no, I'm not saying it's wrong to roll. I'm saying it's wrong to roll during the turn. Oh, yeah. Because you were at 50 gold and you just rolled on to 40 gold for... Like, it doesn't change anything what's on your bench, right? You either win this fight or you don't win this fight. And if you have a two-star Sejuani on the bench, it's not going to affect the fight at all. Yeah. So the only thing it'll affect is that you will have less gold to roll next turn. So, yeah. Just so like stop rolling the moment that uh, the turn starts. Yeah. When you cannot improve your board anymore, like when you cannot influence the, the round, then don't roll. Like, unless, unless you have 50 gold and you're going to die. Like, 
Uh huh. Okay. No way. Wait. Da, 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 da. What? There's a Yone. Yeah, I know, I know. So this is this is a shout out to every I don't know whatever rank you are, but I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna like flame. I'd say like platinum and gold and, and lower more. If there's a Yone, you pick up the Yone. Yone is still extremely powerful. He's one of the best units. You can put him anywhere. And you have Adepts, right? You have a you have a random Aatrox that's kind of lost on your board. Wouldn't that be much better if you put in Yone? For three Adept and two Pierce resistances. So if anyone has any sort of armor, the armor is shredded and Ash can kill them. So I understand, I, like, the Zeke's is, Zeke's is the best item. Completely agree. Best item Zeke's. Yeah? Yeah, but it's on the one cost. That is relevant. Like, right now, no one, like, it doesn't matter if it's one, one, two, three, like, but the fact is there's a Yone. So, if, if, if there's a extremely powerful legendary on the carousel, you just grab it. Yeah. If you, if you can fit, if you can fit it, which you can, because your comp is... Uh, um, how do I put this nice? Like, your comp is not, uh... Two to all hell. It's just random shit, right? Because, <laughs> like, do you know the hunter comp? Uh, somewhat, yeah. I've tried to play it before, but I usually end up failing with it, so all I really know is get enough front line to keep Ash alive. That, that's, I mean, that's good. I like that concept, but... You can improve upon that by putting in like uh, like three adepts, um, like two or three hunters, maybe some dazzlers, definitely mystic. So it's like Ash, fine, Zillion, fine, Kindred could be Warwick instead, um, Shen, of course, I really are sure, and then like these three units are kind of random. Yeah, um, considering that at this point I hadn't actually seen a Warwick, that's why I'm using the Kindred. Yeah, that, that's completely I fine. Like yeah. change Kindred for a Warwick later. But you should have had two, two star Kindred by now, because you had a lot of them earlier that you did not pick up. Yeah. No, that, that's a no. That's still a no. Okay. Why? Um, do you understand why? Oh my god, I'm an idiot. Sorry. Okay. My bad. I'll oh, shut up. You have Hunter anyway because it's a Hunter Ash. Okay. Like, you, like the concept is right that you have good front line. So you have you have like your front line and your damage dealer, so that that's good. I'm happy about that. But overall it's just kind of like this this comp could be a lot stronger if you put in the right units. So that's one of the things I uh, realized later um Yeah. We don't need Yeah, okay, good. Please, no, okay. How is this board strong enough to go nine? Can you explain that to me, please? Uh, I don't actually know. Like, can you like look at the board and tell me what are some indicators that you should or should not go nine? Well, I, for one thing, have six one-stars, which is a pretty good... Yes! That That's like a big-ass flashing light saying, upgrade me, upgrade me, upgrade me. If you had 70 HP, fuck it, go 9. If you have 29 HP, going 9 is super risky. Because, like, you're weak. You might lose this round. You might have one life left. And yeah. Oh, uh, Ash is yeah, Ash is just such a smurf. Oh, never mind. Yeah. Okay, so you still have two lives, but like, it, uh. Oh, 
Okay, yeah, so we, we know that this is never happening again, right? Yeah, we know this is never happening again. Like, either you're like, fuck it, I'm leveling, or you're like, I'm, I'm not strong enough and rolling. But it's never, like, waste 20 gold for this, like, nice shiny bar, and then roll. Yeah, we oh, got that one. Good, 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 good. If that's, like, one of the easiest things to, to fix, just, yeah, fix it, please. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll do what I can. Because, honestly, the play there was... Uh, and, uh, like, uh, I guess, like, here it doesn't matter because it was, like, before creeps, but the play now, like, wasn't to put in put in levels. The play was to just roll to upgrade your board first. Yeah. Like, maybe if the lobby is extremely weak, you could have gotten away with, uh, but, like, I, I know, like, you, you just don't have maybe enough game knowledge to, like, decide, but even if you make a de bad decision, just stick with it. Never backpedal, because, like, you put XP in levels, then you start rolling. So either it's like, okay, I'm going to try leveling up, and you realize maybe it was wrong. Or I'm going to re-roll, re and you realize maybe it's wrong. But it's never like, I'm going to try leveling up, and then I'm going to, no, actually, that's not good, I'm going to roll. And then, like, then you just completely waste gold. And it's like, right? So it's like, make one decision and just stick with it. Cause... I can tell you the lobby was pretty weak, and... Uh... If you will, I can also spoil who wins the game, but uh, yeah. I think we'll leave it here. But it's like you have 61 gold, and it's just all of a sudden like... Because what does this do? Like, what are you rolling for? You roll twice. So it, this tells me uh, you have no idea what the fuck you're doing. Sorry. But all like... right. <laughs> right? Did I, yeah. get, did I guess that correctly? Yeah. So it's like... Um, you're rolling right now to get two star Zillion or two star Lee, which would be completely insane. Also, you're rolling to find three star Ash, and you're and you're more likely to find uh, two star Ivelia, two star uh, Azir, two star Sedge, and two star Shen. Yeah, I would have never kept two star two star Ari. No, that's not the play here. So yeah, so that's just like and. Like, you either roll, like, probably on 6-1 rather than 5-7. But you could roll to 50 on 5-7. That's completely acceptable. There's no point being at 70 gold, like, yes. But then the, the pre-level was kind of kind of a, a grief. I made a decision. You made a decision. Good. You made a decision. Because I know I'm about to die. Okay. You need to be a bit faster. The the Azir should get the Zeke's buffs because his his ultimate is like like so many times more important than than Shen's, right? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, you should put in the boss maybe over Aatrox or something as well. Yeah, I think I... And you're rolling now, which is another thing you're also never doing again, right? Yeah, not rolling after combat starts. Or like, you can... Yeah, just... Yeah, that's that's a good rule. Don't roll when combat starts. That's just... It doesn't do anything. Like, the most tilting thing is when I roll, like, once during combat and I hit that three-star ribbon. I'm like, oh, shit, if I had been able to put it in. And it just frustrates yeah, me even yeah, more. yeah, yeah. I, I've had that one several times. Yeah, so also that... I like to admit. So that kind of, like, saves you from tilting. And this is the point where you, like, right now, you should know that you're not getting 3-star Ash, right? Yeah, I uh, I know that. I sell the two Ashes right after this one. But again, one interest. One interest wasted. Yep. And possibly... Wait, that's eleven. So no, that's eighteen. That's nineteen. Okay. And you're never, you're never playing Lilia or the. Okay. Oh, because she's a mage. Oh God, because you have the stupid mage cap, which griefed you even more. But like, oh, what? Yeah. Is, what is better than Lilia? Uh, Cillian and another Lysin. Uh. The boss. And, uh, yes, uh, any other legendary at this point? 
Like, what what tiers, Lilia? You, you read my tier list of legendaries, right? Uh, no, but I'm gonna take a loose guess and say she's a B tier. Uh, she's like the worst legendary by far. Alright, C tier. Yeah. Because, like, what does she bring to the table? Right? Like, Azir stuns the whole board. Leak. Asleep? <laughs> she sleeps two units. Like, yeah. is Lilia better than Sejuani? Uh, probably no. No, right? So if she's not better than a four cost, why the hell is she even here? I mean, Lilia is amazing in dusk comps and in mage comps. Like, if you're playing Vigar and you have a two-star Lilia, it's three times two. So she will sleep six yeah. units. That is busted. But that's why she's... It is. She's really good in, in special niche comps. Not She's not a splash legendary. Azir, Zillian... Uh, Lee, kind of. Yone, definitely. Set their splash. Kane, their splash legendaries. Ezreal is also kind of a splash legendary. Lila is the only legendary that cannot be splashed. So, keep that in mind. One in mind. There we go. Double Kane chop. Just ignore it. Good. <laughs> we have our Lilia. But I mean, yeah, like Kane without without uh, form is kind of bad. Um, I I don't know. Oh, Jinjiao is for duelist. Okay, okay, I guess. So, do you know why you got second in this game? I have a pretty decent idea about it. Uh, I made way too many mistakes. Um, oh, I I'm not saying in a in like a. Why you didn't get first? I'm saying why why did you even like get top four? Uh because I chose to roll um down when I did. Um sure, but like what is what is the, the thing on this board that is correct? That's ash. The chosen ash with perfect items is what got you a top two. Yeah. If you hadn't hit the chosen ash, like you would bought for. This would have it. been a seventh or a sixth. Or yes. Plus DNA. Yes. So it's like the only good, like sorry, but like the only like very good play you made was the ash. The other stuff, like, but I hope like I, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just trying to like point out no, no, your no. mistakes, uh, right? Uh, yeah. No, no, I'll, uh, I'll I'll happily hear the uh, the critique because it's uh, gonna help not only me but anyone watching him. Yeah. So like. The comp right now, it, it's not terrible, but there's so many improvements you could have you could have made on this comp, right? Uh, oh yeah. So okay, okay. Would you have picked up the Zillion? Uh, yeah, I probably would, but I end up going for the Guardian Angel. Oh wait, I wanted the Guardian Angel, but I okay. got to got to go for the Static Show. And yeah, I'm putting it on the Lee Sin in order to give him more attack speed and more... Um... Yeah, there's nothing like there's... Yeah, that's, no, no. that's that's fine. But like... Um, <laughs> it's like this this board is just not it. And it's because like you, you kind of trapped yourself into this board, right? Yeah, I did. And going nine was not the right... Like, yes, you get second... But you would get second no matter what, as long as you protect the Ash. Okay? Uh, yeah, I probably would. So, the way you get first is by three-starring Ash. And that's, like, a thing you need to know that, like, the only thing you need right now in this position is three-star Ash. And you can play whatever shit you want to play, but if you three-star the Ash, you win the game. And then, like, right. nothing else really matters if you had stayed on eight and you rolled for three-star Ash. And upgrades as well. Like, uh, yeah. upgraded front line. And then the, I mean the, the Jinjiao Jinjiao is, should have gone months ago. Yeah, the Jinjiao should have been gone. Like, what if you had instead of Jinjiao and Sedge, or like, okay, fine, Sedge is kind of okay, but like, fine, Irelia and and uh, and Jinjiao. Like, what are some units you could have had? Like, I'm pretty sure uh, that, there well, was a Warwick I think at some I point. Exchange him for Yone. Yeah, sure, and there was a Warwick at some point uh, as well. And. Uh... So Warwick from him, uh, for one of these, right? Warwick. 
Ja. Uh, Warwick for... Ja. Uh, yeah. Warwick. I don't recall who I... And then what else could have gone with Warwick? Uh, mm, Kendrick, um, no, not, not necessary. I could have run uh, Set. Set? Of course. Uh, no, 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 Jax. No, Jax. No, Jax. No way. Jax, Jax is too is useless. Divine, uh, duelist. But Jax is too useless right now. You're not playing, you're not playing uh, uh, Divine Comp. So, no, instead not. of these three units, if that was Set... Warwick and Yone, you could probably win the lobby. Agree? I mean, I'll see the final fight pretty soon. Yeah. But, but set Warwick and Yone, like, would be so much stronger. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. And, like, do you understand why? Uh, yeah, I do understand why. Yeah, like the synergies and the fact that they're legendaries and it's just like, they provide so much more. Yeah, they do. Yeah. So it's like, you don't want to have random, like, three costs and four costs that don't, like, Sejuani is the exception because she has an AoE stun. But Jin, there's no no room for Jin in this comp. Uh, no, not without at least some kind of healing or some stupid overpower. No, uh... no, 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 no room for Jin. Period, sorry. No room for Jin, yeah. period. No, that's fine. Yeah. Like, imagine these items on set. Like, apart from the cap. Right? Yeah. Why is why is uh Warmogs acceptable on set? Uh on set? Yeah. Uh because he is based on next HP. Uh no? What, what does HP do for him? Uh, well, it makes him do more sit-ups, but... Uh... Nope, that's incorrect. Wait, does it make him do fewer sit-ups? Nope. Each well, sit-up... Each sit-up... Each sit-up is 15% HP. Well, so... It well, it keeps him on the field for longer, uh, makes him able to attack more often, no, well. It makes his sit-ups worth more. Uh. Right? Because each sit-up is 15% yeah. HP. So if he has 1,000 HP more, he'll be getting 150 HP per sit-up more. And he'll be doing sit-ups yeah. anyway. So that's why Warmogs yeah. is kind of... Who else can use Warmogs, by the way? From, uh, Tom Kench? Uh, I mean, legendaries. Oh, uh... Um, I'd say... Uh, what's he called? Asia could... Uh, Lee Sin could... Um, There's, like, one even... Like, one even better than... than or, like, on par of set and one relatively good. Uh, and I... And you need to tell me why. I want to say Cillian because he can stay alive longer, thereby rest more people. Uh, nah. It does like, uh, like where Warmarks actually makes a difference. Yone could be one. Uh, Definitely, it gives him like fifty percent more, right, with the exile trait. Yeah, it does. That's why it's good, and the other one, similar to to Zillion, but. Why, like uh, a good user of, of uh, Warmogs? Uh, Kane? Yeah, Red Kane. Because he does crazy damage, right? So he will heal 2000 HP with, with uh, Warmog. Yeah, and he won't have that much HP, so it, and it will just disappear. But like with, with Warmogs, he will, and Red Kane, he'll just heal like even more HP, so he'll be even way harder to kill. So. Yeah. yeah. So we're rolling. We're rolling. We're not getting three star ash. I'd given up on getting three yeah. star ash. At that's this point. like that's fair because like by going to nine you kind of wrecked your economy so you couldn't get three star ash. So that was the, that yeah. was the right call. Agree. This guy's not winning the lobby. Please tell me he's not winning the lobby. Uh no he isn't. Okay. Uh, the good. guy above me is the one who wins the yeah. lobby. 
Um, is there a world where you sell gin and put two zillion? That's actually not a bad idea. Did you hear that? Selling, selling gin and putting in two zillions? Uh, or another Lee? Because like... Selling, is, is it Estrella you mean, or...? <sighs> okay, this is never the play. Oh, the Sin Sal, uh, right, yeah. yeah. Sorry, the Sin. I should put uh, him. So what is the play here? Uh, sell the Sichuani, put in the new, new, uh, take the Estrell. Sure. Oh, well, sell, sell the Sichuani, put in the, um, the Silly and, and buy the Estrell. Uh, so, well, I mean, sell the, sell the Jin and sell the Sichuani. Hmm. Put in Ezreal, put in yeah. Nunu and the boss. Yeah. You get, you get Elderwood, you get Brawler and wait, you didn't have to sell. Wait, Elderwood. No, you only yeah, you yeah, only I sell this. You just sell Sejuani for 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 no and the boss. Okay, yeah, these two for for Nunu and the boss. Yeah. And you, it's never you cannot sell the Zillion here. I hope you understand that because two star yeah, Zillion is too good. Yeah, I know. Okay. And it, uh, so again, like just if you just like look at the ultimates, right? If you look at the ultimates, it's like you should be able to figure this out on your own. Like I can give you the answer, but like if you look, yeah, 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 I, I, I know, I know, I know. Right, like Azir ultimate compared to Sejuani ultimate. If you just like know the ultimates, this two point five around her or this. Um, two seconds everywhere, it's just better. Right? So, like, yeah. you should know that, like, what is what is better. Yeah. And set is better than, than the Sejuani and than that. Yeah. Because, yeah. Yeah. yes, he's buggy, but if he, ult if he ults, he kind of, like, lowers everything's HP. And why is, like, set so good with Ash with this setup? Uh, because it enables Ash to keep on shooting uh, while he is up front. Um, it helps. It helps lower the HP of all the units so that Ash can stack a death blade. Oh yeah. Of so, course. if if Set would grab this Kenny, like grab this Kenny and slam it in there, at least he'll pop the Keeper shields a little bit. Like this is super hard for Ash to get through. Like, yeah. this person is playing it so well. Like, it's so hard for you to chew through this. And Set would at least slam slam it. Like, Sejuani 1 can, is not going to ultimate against this. Like, there's yeah. too much damage. Like, poor Ash is, is doing her best. But, like, right now it's like one Ash cannot just win everything. Oh, this is yeah. the guy who beat you on 5, 6 as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. So there's a Warwick. Let's see if we. Okay, we value the Sichuani. Okay, okay, and we're rolling. Okay, we we know we're never doing this again. Good. Cause I. What? Oh, yeah. Okay. So I I think you're capable of rolling ten gold on a turn, right? Yeah, I am. So like next turn you could have just rolled like that. You could have rolled. That's, oh my god, okay, I was gonna say hard punish that you sold the zillion, but the game loves you too much. But yeah, hard punish that you sold the zillion. And we're positioning, that's good. You're trying to... I'm trying to do something. Okay, 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 this is good, this is fine. This is fine. Um, yeah. I mean, you're, like, the positioning is good. Like, you, you try to do something with positioning. Uh, it helped. But your board is just too weak. Yep. So even though you that kind of... That was also the conclusion I came to. Sorry? Yeah. That was also the conclusion I ended at, yeah. Yeah. That, like, you did, like... And the crazy thing is, you almost won this. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know how, how, how many mistakes I called you out on and you still almost won this.
yes, we have been going for almost two hours. Oh, so, shit. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, no QSS. That is correct. Uh, sorry, no adept. There aren't that many QSS, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I imagine if know. you have adept. Like, Jinx is not, not gonna get much mana or cast. Jinx is not. Like, if you had three adept here, you win. Possibly. Definitely. Because. How do like how does this beat you? It beats you by getting mana. By casting yeah. and by doing damage. But if Jin is if Jin is slow, Zilla like Adept is really, really powerful. And if Yone, like imagine Yone or Set, because he's all clumped up. And the reason he can do that and is cause you don't punish him. If you had a Yone or Set and he clumps up like this, he gets like one ultimate will clear half of the board. Or like um mark half of the board. And, like, yeah. So it's just like look at the Ezreal ulti. So that that's a beautiful ulti, and imagine you had another Yone or like some something else. You just clean the whole thing up. If you had two ultis like that, like from Ezreal and from another unit, you clean it up, because this was so 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 close. Yeah. Yeah. And, and oh yeah. You have ended your stream, by the way. Sorry. You have ended your Twitch stream. What? I don't know when you did that. I haven't. It crashed probably. Uh... It's crushed. Great. Um, actually, you know how you win it? Even on this round, just put in the Asir over the over the Wukong. Um, the Warwick. Ah, it's still up. That's also... Because, like, Warwick gives you one Hunter proc, while Azir can stun everything. It just, like... Yeah. Uh, and you should, like... You should take the time. Honestly, I, I did this... I, I told the <coughs> Daniel to do the same exercise. Look at every single unit and every ultimate they have. Azir over Sedge. Uh, Azir over Sedge is fine. Azir over Wukong is fine. Azir is just should be in there. Like, look at every unit and every ult ultimate and really think about, like, how powerful it is or is not. So, like, you read this and you think, like, is it good? Is it bad? It's, like, it's kind of like a GA and, like, a Zeke's because it does, like, damage. It's actually pretty good. And you kind of, like, do this for every unit so that you have your own understanding of why it's good. Because I can tell you Yone and Kane are powerful, but you should actually read it and think about it and then like come to the conclusion so that when you see that unit, you're like, I'm buying it, I'm using it, it's really good. Yeah. Yeah? So it's kind of like some, some homework you can, like homework, like, like something to study. Because like, I do that a lot. Like in the builder, I'm like thinking and looking at the units and like thinking how powerful they are, how they can work together and all that good stuff. Because you never want to be thinking in game. A game is for executing, and before the game is for like planning and thinking. But in game, you should execute. Yeah. So, Shadow, do you think this coaching session has given you anything? Uh, definitely has. Great. Um, Happy to hear that. There are a lot of things I can definitely improve on, which will no doubt uh, <laughs> turn my losing uh, losing spree. <laughs> I'm happy to hear that. Do you have any further questions before we end it? Uh, no, I don't. Okay, well, thank you for stopping by. Uh, 